I'm on Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I'm going to talk about the HDR performance of the monitor. I covered the HDR settings in the best settings video and also in the OSD video, which the best setting video is just a part of. So I'm not going to go through them here except to say that my preference goes to gaming HDR. For some reason console HDR, I had some issues on my unit with some strange sort of posterization effects, some strongly saturated rings around bright objects, and some bright shades just appeared too blended together. But which mode you use might depend on your unit, your preferences, your system. If you're using a gamer's console, perhaps console HDR does suit better. So feel free to test the other ones. But I'm just going to dive straight into some figures first. And also when I return to the game, just so you don't get a huge shock that the screen has suddenly become narrower, it's because I'm going to change my camera lens for the same reason I talked about in the contrast section, and that's because this lens just doesn't pick up some of these finer details very well at all. So again, being an OLED, the black luminance level is zero, the contrast ratio is infinite, so it's really the brightness you can focus on. There are different percentages given here, they are the percentage window size for this test. So if you're not familiar, there's a white square in the centre of the screen that is surrounded by pure black and it is running in HDR, the test. The test I use is a YouTube HDR brightness test and I have to be honest, I wasn't actually able to run this in 32 by 9 but I was able to run it in 21 by 9 So the percentages here aren't entirely accurate, but it's fairly close and each square is certainly a different size to the other squares, so it's going to give you a decent representation. And the 100% white, I was able to fill up the entire screen with white, so that's not a problem. But really what I see here is in line with other QD OLED models, so for smaller white patches it pumps out just above a thousand nits. As bright shades dominate, or in this case a larger white square is present on the screen, the luminance capability is reduced. That's again because of ABL. This is a common limitation, it's a power limitation which applies to OLED screens. They require more power as more of the pixels become bright. It really can't pump out its full brightness where bright shades really dominate. For those who prefer a graphical representation, I have graphed things. There aren't any other models I'm comparing to here. That's really because it wouldn't be apples to apples because of what I said about the white patch sizes not being entirely accurate, with the exception of 100% white. But really, if you look at my review of the AW3423DW, which is a one of the 34-inch QD OLED models, the brightness capability is really quite similar. There is another line on the graph, and that shows the response with the Display HDR 400 True Black setting. And that one is capped, so the maximum there is 468 nits instead of 1031 nits, so it's closer to 400 nits, hence the name, Display HDR 400 True Black. It does still drop below there, where it can't sustain that for larger patch sizes, but overall it's more consistent because the minimum is 282, the maximum is 468, so that's closer together than 267 and 1031. So some people might prefer this setting, although it's less consistent, I do personally prefer using the other HDR settings. And incidentally, the readings with the console setting, the movie setting, and the gaming setting for HDR, they were all much the same with this particular test. Back on the game now with more of a detail-oriented camera lens, and using my preferred gaming HDR setting. 10-bit precision is used under HDR, it is HDR10 content that the monitor is responding to, and that's where HDR10 gets its name from. This monitor can make full use of that and this enhances the nuanced shade variety, and this is combined with the per pixel illumination provided by the OLED panel, so there's not a backlight, there's not dimming zones, no nothing like that. If you want to think of dimming zones, this model has roughly 7.3 million of them. Exceptional precision, so some of these pixels can be completely shut off, some of them can be very slightly brighter than that, and some of them can be very bright, others can be somewhere between those, you get the idea. And with 10-bit precision, enhanced tone mapping that you get under HDR, enhances the nuanced shade variety, it gives you a natural uplift of detail, which is very nice, and it works very well, it complements the OLED panel very nicely. It also allows the monitor to put its colour gamut to good use, and I'll come on to that later. And there are advantages with bright shades as well, enhanced nuanced shade variety there gives a more natural look and more gentle progressions of shade. And again, it is certainly complemented very well by the per pixel illumination. No halos to worry about, and even where very dark and very bright shades intermingle, no issues that you would get with a local dimming solution on a mini LED LCD. So the brightness there, it's pretty bright. Not extremely bright, but it's not trying to be extremely bright. The game's not really going for that here. Even the light cast on the floor there of this cave stands out nicely. 
again the really strong contrast does help and I can see straight away in this scene really lovely variety of medium and dark shades excellent depth to the medium shades it really gives a look which isn't replicated on LCDs some mini LED LCDs do pretty well in this scene as well but the OLED precision is really on another level here. Now the glint of light on the water surface that is nice and bright so this is really where the monitor is able to pump out very strong luminance. It's not being held back too much by ABL behavior. I mean, there are you know a fair number of bright shades. It's not just a really small white square with a pure black background now, but even so, there's a sufficient number of medium to darker shades on the screen that the ABL doesn't kick in heavily here. The light streaming in from above as well, nice eye-catching look to that. And again, really nice gentle progressions of shade. Just gonna adjust the camera to give you a bit of a better representation because it doesn't just look like a giant ball of light. A little bit more like that, the mist on the water surface shows some really smooth gradients. You can't see this in the video properly, but to the eye it's certainly something you can appreciate. I'm on Cyberpunk 2077. I just want to give you a quick demonstration of the ABL behavior. So if I look at the scene now with just a little bit of bright shade from the sky at the top there, it's really bright, rather eye-catching. The HUD elements are nice and bright as well. You can see them at the edges of the screen, the left and right side. If, however, I introduce more bright shade, those HUD elements, the medium shades down there even, and the bright shades, they all dim because of the ABL. So it's a universal dimming. It doesn't just affect the bright shades, it affects the whole image. So there's just this shift. And again, if you didn't like this and you're playing games or scenes in games come up too frequently where you're noticing this and you find it get annoying and then you could use a true black 400 setting but then you don't get the kind of look you get here where you get exceptional brightness and some of the other scenes that I've shown you where those bright elements stand out really well, they won't. This scene is one which is really much less impressive on mini LED solutions because there are some really small lights with much darker backgrounds and they just don't have the precision. Well, the ones I test certainly don't because they're Got fewer than 2,000 dimming zones versus, again, sort of 7 million in this case. With those, you can certainly see halos of light around the lights here. And there's a sort of flickering effect on those as well with movement because of the transitions between the dimmer and brighter shades. And if it dark biases heavily, these mini LED solutions, the algorithms there, then it's going to be really dimming these bright shades down, whereas on the OLED, all of the bright shades in this scene are really impressive, really nice eye-catching look to them. This scene here is one where I have not ever been as impressed as I am with QD OLED models like this. A few reasons for that. Again, the Perpixel illumination is extremely helpful because of the shade mixtures present here. Also, smaller areas of bright shade here which stand out beautifully well. But the reason I'm actually more impressed with the QD OLED than the W OLED models and that's because there's actually this sort of silvery purple quality to the outer rim of the bright reflection there, which looks really lovely and smooth here. Whereas on the W OLED models, because they rely on a white subpixel, which is unfiltered to create the light, there's actually really just a sort of pure white core and then an abrupt, more saturated but much less bright ring. You don't get that effect here with the QD OLEDs because it provides a far superior color volume which is to say it can provide strong saturation and brightness at the same time. This isn't something you can appreciate from the video, and I know this probably just looks like a big ball of white light, but to the eye it's really eye-catching, but again has a nice natural blue, silver, purple quality to it, which it should have. And the background here, the nuanced shade variety, the 10-bit colour reproduction comes into play, the ability for the OLED to dim down massively for the small shadow details, even if they're very small, with neighbouring somewhat brighter medium shades. And you'll see here there's some tiny little highlight details. It's all shown very nicely here. I'm now on Battlefield 5 and I'm going to show you another scene under HDR. I just wanted you to appreciate the beauty of pure white and pure black together without any haloing or anything like that. So this scene is actually one where I prefer the mini LED representation to the OLED representation, and that's because the ABL is kicking in quite heavily now. It doesn't look bad. I mean, it has reasonable brightness to it, but the ABL really does subdue that sun compared to how it should look, and there isn't this nice glint of light down there that there should be either. So it doesn't have the brilliance it should have. 
it really looks more like a sort of bright SDR representation than a true HDR representation, in terms of the brightness at least. But the overall scene in terms of the, the mixtures over here, for example, they're handled very nicely. It's just these bright shades, uh, much less impressive than the ones I was talking about before. And I just wanted to add this scene in quickly because it's another one where I find QD OLEDs particularly impressive, more so than LG Display W OLED technology. And that's because the lava here is both bright and saturated. It's shown with lovely bright yellows, bright oranges, some reds, nice saturation levels and brightness shown at the same time. So it has a much more natural look than it does on the W OLEDs. LCDs don't have an issue with this either, but the Purpix illumination really helps with the definition of the bright elements versus the somewhat dimmer elements next to it and the much dimmer elements elsewhere. You get the idea. It just completes the whole image. And also the very generous colour gamut plus the strong colour volume means that golds like that, the really lovely bright natural quality to the golds, which I haven't really seen on any other panel technology in quite the same way. I'm on another scene, again on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, You'll see that there is more of the monitor visible, that's because I'm using my other lens because the detail focus isn't as important now. I'm talking about colour now. So the colour gamut, just to give you a reminder, 99% DCI P3. Under HDR, unlike under SDR, the developers target wider colour gamuts such as DCI P3 and ultimately Rec 2020. That's really the ultimate goal to have amazing Rec 2020 coverage, which is a much larger colour space than even DCI P3. This monitor does not fully cover Rec 2020, but it does cover a decent chunk of it, and with the gamut being put to good use under HDR, the level of vibrancy overall is good, but some elements are toned down compared to under SDR, so you don't get the neon look to these greens, but there are some nice deep greens, and they don't look like they look on the camera, by the way. That's just because of the brightness levels are quite high. And again, you won't see exactly what things look like to the eye. But to the eye, they are really nice, lush-looking greens, an excellent variety as well. Laura's green dress as well. Range of greens, some lovely deep greens there, some brighter emerald greens in places as well. And fires, they're another element which are overdone under SDR, so oranges which verge on red, yellows which verge on orange, etc. But under HDR, and again, it doesn't just look like a giant ball of light. It really has a bright, warm white core, yellows, oranges, you know, how fire should look. So overall, the HDR performance on this monitor is certainly impressive. Of course, it would be nice if it could maintain strong brightness where bright shades dominate, and even in this scene that happens to an extent, so I look up at, at the sky, and there aren't the same distinctions there should be with the clouds and sort of bright areas of light around the mountain there, for example. It looks reasonably bright, but doesn't have the eye-catching look it should have. And that's really an area where mini-LED technology is superior to current OLEDs, including this QD OLED. 